All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to prove two very important properties of compact sets. Namely, compact sets are bounded and they are closed. So first of all, let me define what it means for a set to be bounded. So definition E is bounded. So in a metric space, if simply your set E is contained in a ball. So in other words, there is some x in E and some positive radius such that E is contained in the ball center that x and radius are. So if there is, is x in E and r positive such that E is a subset of that ball. So again, bounded sets are included in balls. And um, now let's prove that a, a compact set must be bounded. So uh, fact one, if E is compact, then E is bounded. And by the way, this is yet another proof why R is not compact. So for instance, non-example, well, R is not bounded, so it's unbounded, hence not compact. So compact sets must have some oomph. Namely, they should be like compact, they shouldn't be unbounded, so they are bounded. And the proof is super, super neat, so consider the following cover. And here's the thing about compactness proofs. Our cover can be super crazy. As long as it's a cover, then we're good, because we can use compactness. So proof, consider, so let x be in E. And the empty set is compact, so assume there's some element in E. Then consider the falling cover. This falling cover U. Namely, just balls centered at X and radius uh, capital M, let's say or radius n, where n is an integer. So just the following one. So you start at x, and you start with the ball centered at x and radius 1. Then the ball centered at x and radius 2. Ball centered at x and radius 3. Etc. Etc. It's almost like a water wave. So you start with x and the ripples, they're your uh, open cover. So this, well, you can show that u uh, is an open cover. Then u is an open cover of e. And therefore, again, once we have an open cover, bang, we're in the game because E is compact. Uh, so since E is compact, there is a finite subcover. Subcover, let's call it mu or V, sorry, um, V, which is just, if you want, B, uh, X, and 1, dot, 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 up to B, X, and K. All right, and now, just let uh, capital N to, again, be the maximum of all those numbers. So let um, capital N to be the maximum of N1 up to nk, then the point is, because v, they're all open, indeed they're all open balls, 
Well, the union of those open balls is just B of X comma capital N. Then, the union of V is B X capital N. So the ball centered at X and of the largest radius, but what is the union of V? We know that V uh, covers E. So the union of V covers E. So since V is a cover, we then get that E is included in the union, but the union is just BXN. But then, what have we found? We found some radius r, such that b e is included in the ball centered at x in radius r. So with uh, uh, r to be n, we get e is a subset of b x r. Done. So it's bounded. All right, now let's prove the second property of compact sets, namely that compact sets are not only bounded, but they're also closed. So fact two. So if E is compact, then E is closed. So yet another reason why the open interval 0, 1 in R is not compact. Okay. So, and now let's prove this. And again, the proof is very neat because remember, no matter how funky our open covering, if it's an open covering, then we can use compactness. So that's a main thing you have to understand. So proof. Suppose E is compact. We want to show that E is closed, meaning that the complement should be open. So show E complement is open. What does it mean for E complement to be open? So it means that Again, this is maybe E, and this is E complement. It means that no matter which point we pick in E complement, we can find a small enough radius capital R such that the ball centered at X and radius R is fully included in E complement. So this means uh, for all x in E complement, want to find R positive such that the ball centered at x and radius R is fully included in E complement. So remember that this will be very important because again, you'll be confused, but remember you'll be happy once you see this statement. So let x be in E complement. And now we want to consider the following really funky uh, covering. So X, the first step is all the points that are at least one away from X. So this will be our uh, U1. Think of it like that. So this is U1. Our second step is the set of all points that are at least one half away from x. So this is if you want u2. And notice uh, u2 is in included in, uh, no, uh, so u2 includes u1, because u1 is this red thing, and then uh, u2 is this blue thing. So uh, u2 includes u1, and then, um, then, in general, given n, we want un to be all the points that are at, at least 1 over n away. All right, so I know this picture might make no sense, but let's formalize this. So um, consider the following family. Consider u 
which is the set of all u n, where n is a natural number. Okay. Then, um, first of all, and again, what is u n? Well, again, it's a set of all the points that are a distance at least 1 over n away from x. Now, this set is open. Why? Because the complement is a set of all points that are less or equal to 1 over n away. Okay? Then, um, and that set is closed, therefore the complement must be open. So, um, un is open, and moreover, what is the union? of the UN is the following thing. Well, think about this, what this might mean. So we have X, and then we have this sequence of increasing intervals, kind of like this, and then like this, and then like this. You see, kind of the union, what it is, it is everything except for X. So the union of un is, if you want, it's the set of uh, y, where dxy, it's greater than, well, if this goes to infinity, this is zero, so bigger than zero, so it really is all the points except for x. Okay, however, remember x, by definition, was not an e, it was an e complement, so, x complement must definitely include e. Because uh, e is definitely not x. That's by definition of x. And therefore, hence the union of un of un, or if you want the union of u, includes e. Therefore, what can we conclude? We can conclude that u is an open cover. So, u is an open cover. For e and... Okay, so what have we found? We found that u is a cover, is an open cover of e. And again, no matter how funky the cover is, as long as it's a cover and the set is compact, it means we're in the game. Because since E is compact, there is a finite subcover. Subcover. V. You might almost say we discovered it. <laughs> okay, and then this is UN1. Let's say UN1 up to UNK. And as usual, consider the bigger one of N1 up to NK. So let capital N be the maximum of N1 up to NK. Now, remember, those sets, they're actually kind of nested because we have the following. Let's say we're at x. We started with u1. u1. And then we had u2. Okay, so one half, u2, which includes u1. Etc. Etc. So actually, the sets they're increasing because their hole is getting smaller and smaller. So since, in general, since u n is increasing, in the sense that u one is included in u two, dot dot dot, the union of v. of V, which is just a union of UN1 up to UNK, is just U capital N, namely the bigger one of all of those. That's U capital N. 
However, what do you know about the union of V? Well, V is a subcover, so it must cover E. So since V is a subcover, subcover, we get that E, which is included in the union. And the union is U capital N. So E is in U capital N. So what do we have? This is E. This is, let's say, U capital N. So this whole thing. And therefore, again, by set theory, if you want, if A is included in B, then B complement is included in A complement. So the set of points that are not in UN, so this whole thing, and this is UN complement, it's included in E complement. So remember, E complement is this whole thing. Anything that's not in E. And you see this red ball is in that green region. All right. So what do we get? Remember, what was UN complement? And what was UN? UN, it's again the set of points Y such that dxy it's less it's sorry, greater than 1 over n and so un complement it's the set of points y where dxy it's less than or equal to 1 over n but here's the thing on the one hand we know this is included in e complement on the other hand well this set includes the set of all points where dxy is strictly less than 1 over n. Because if you're strictly less than 1 over n, you are less than or equal to 1 over n. So in fact, this set here actually includes a ball centered at x and radius 1 over capital N. So again, in terms of our picture, we have uh, un complement. complement. We know this is a subset of E complement. So maybe this is E and maybe this is E complement. And then in particular that ball centered at x and radius 1 over capital N. That ball, well, it must also be in the black shaded region. So in fact, bx1 over n is included in E complement. But wait a moment, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted a ball centered at x and some radius that is included in E complement. Remember I told you you're gonna be confused, but when you see that you should be happy? Well, now it's your time to be happy because we're done with the proof. So let, so if R is just this one over capital N, then we get BXR is included in E complement. So E complement is open. So E is closed. And therefore case closed, we are done. Hence, We've seen that if a set is compact, it must be closed and bounded. And the question is, it raises a question, um, if E is closed and bounded, does E have to be compact? In general, it turns out to, the answer is no, but in the next video, we'll see maybe. All right, thank you very much.